So I remember when I was last here, this was your ancestral portraits one-on-one -on -one, and they've now been moved over to make way for... Fanny's ancestors. You can see that Fanny's ancestors are a lot fancier than mine were. Mine are simple. He was a shoemaker in Framingham, Massachusetts and Fanny's lineage is from England and Germany and all Fanny, over Fanny, you got the so continent. fancy. They're all from Mario Blada's estate. Everything on the wall except for the two little brackets came from him. Um, it's a really nice tribute to have of my friend. So this is my small collection of, um, or ever-growing collection of Marion McAvoy pieces. Downstairs in the living room, there's a cork box that she says, I was her first customer. And of course she did the shades in this room too on the bedside table lamps. Since you and Stacy last visited, we've done a lot of transformation here. We have put in the garage that was not here before, which is a greenhouse in the winter. And in the summer, we store the cars in there and extraneous stuff. The garden has been greatly expanded. The dovecote has been put in, um, populated with Indian fantails and white doves. There's such a pleasure to hear cooing when you're out there working in the garden. And then you go up and you see the pool house and the pool garden and the pool. There's an oval pool there that uh, was a Albert Hadley inspired thing from a garden that he had a picture in one of his scrapbooks of. The pool house is based off of the Temple of Pan, which is the William Kent design, and then one part one, Bunny Williams and one part the Bannermans, garden designers over in England, and they do those horn clad buildings. Okay, this pool house just gets, it's not even a pool house. I don't even know what the, this is like a house that we all could live in forever that happens to have a pool. <laughs> Go lay on that sofa. I think you'll enjoy it. It's an Aiken sofa that was a favorite of Sister Parish's. It's got a single bed size mattress on there. Single so you bed can size lay mattress. out and put those porto pillows behind your head and just zoom out into La La Land. Just the phrase single bed size mattress. You had me there. And anything that's good enough for Sister Parish is good enough more than good enough for me. Oh, this is incredible. And then you can walk down from the pool garden and see Anthony's new vegetable garden, which has got all of our vegetables in it. We've got uh, rhubarb, tomatoes, um, onions, all kinds of things that you can eat. It must be so convenient to have like all your own packing plates when you're entertaining. I mean, we have one. a lot of dishes here, an endless supply. They're made right next door. So you just go over there when you want to get something new. Number one really important question is, can I have one of these before our lunch? Sure. Okay, Why thank not? you. They look incredible. Now, I, I, when I was driving over here, I wanted to ask you, every time I see you, I feel like you're expanding not only the farm literally here with animals and outbuildings and everything, but I feel like you're ever the student. You're ever the learner. How much of this is self-taught? And how much did you bring from childhood uh, between the gardening and the cooking and the animals? The cooking recipe is a combination of three different recipes. Yeah, let's start I've, right like, here with the cooking I've, recipe. I've taken one part, this recipe, one part, the other recipe. I've made it like 35 times and like tested it and done different versions of it and kept notes. The chicken recipe is one that my mother and I came up with. It's based off of one part of the Zuni Cafe in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It's based off of chicken 
that they do and my mom and I have simplified it and made it easier. So the trick to the chicken is to use a chicken that's three and a half pounds to four and a half pounds, not too big. Wash it well, dry it inside and out. Take a tablespoon of salt, put the tablespoon of salt on the back of the chicken, inside the chicken, on the top of the chicken, and then I put it on a ceramic plate and put it in the refrigerator for eight to 24 hours to let the bird dry out. You take any excess water off, put it in a hot, hot pan with two or three tablespoons of olive oil, sear the top, sear the bottom, put it in the oven for 45 minutes, and it comes out, let it rest for 10, and you've got better than restaurant chicken. You'll love it. So these are shallots that you leave the skin on, cut them in half, put two or three tablespoons of duck fat, which you can get at your grocery store, your specialty food market, sprinkle a little bit of sugar in the pan, a little bit of salt, and you're going to put this in a hot oven about 450 for about 20 minutes till the bottom of the onions get brown. They become caramelized and so yummy. During um, COVID, Martha's niece gave me a piece of starter and I taught myself how to do bread. And so the recipe that she gave is a little complex, but um, I've even learned to do that in a one day thing. Usually it's a three day, but you can sort of get things done if you learn what corners you can cut. It sounds like you do love taking things that other people have perhaps done and making them your own and learning how to do it and then adapting it for your own life here. I mean, it just seems like you're always teaching yourself things. Definitely, because you also don't always have the ingredients on hands that you might need to do. Maybe you have, um, you know, like I made an apple tart the other night and I didn't have any Granny Smith apples. I had some Honeycrisp apple. I used some Honeycrisp apple. You don't, worry about, you don't yeah. worry about it. You just get it on the table and have it all look good. And that's the important thing is to be a relaxed host. That's the, that's the best host. How about when it comes down to gardening and all the things that you've learned and that you do between the seeds and the, the, the flower arranging and the, I mean everything, how much, how recently have you taught yourself all that? You know, I'm constantly reading a lot about it and speaking to friends and seeing what they do, but so much of it is what works for you. You mm -hmm. know, you can do things that are not exactly in the instruction book. And it will turn out fine, you know, it's, it's not like baking where you've got to have a certain thing. Right. Gardening is very sort of free-flowing and like the cooking thing, I keep a notebook of the things that worked and the things that didn't. And there are triumphs and there are failures, you know. Mentors and teachers, you've had a lot of great ones along the way. I'm sure they're very much in your mind when you're here at your farm. You know now that you've officially become with this book a mentor to a lot of people that don't even know you yet, that are going to look at how you brought to life. I hope so, because farm. Yes. that's the whole reason I did it. What I did it for is to inspire people, to say, okay, I can grow this, I can bake these cookies, I can do this, maybe I can't do it exactly how Chris is, nor do I. I don't do the same right. thing that Bunny does or the same thing that Martha does, but I get inspired by what they do and say, okay, what's my version of it? How am I going to pass this on? I have a cookie question. Whenever I do chocolate chip cookies, I follow the recipe exactly. I preheat the oven, just what they say, but it's always either too undercooked, even if it's exactly when the time is up, or if I wait, it gets burned on the bottom, and then it's too hard. What, why are these so perfect? My trick is, is to wash them like a hawk. You know, when the time is coming upon me, okay. I look at that oven, I say, oh, it's in two more mm -hmm. minutes, and I don't walk away from the oven. I make myself okay, that's stay, my mistake. stay right close to the oven, and we take, I take them out when they're still almost raw in the center. Okay. You know, I take them out, they will finish cooking on the top of the, mm -hmm. the, the oven. You don't need them to be done done. You can see there's a perfectly cooked cookie in there. It it's nice and soft and chewy on the inside, which is what I'm going for with mine. Wait, are you doing these from bulbs in the winter? You're we do it? them from tubers. We start them from a, a, a long sort of potato-like piece that we plant in April, and it begins to grow, and it's very slow, and then July moves around, and you can see the growth, and they take over. In the same spot, I put sweet peas in the spring, so sweet peas are growing up here. We do an early planting of tulips even before the sweet peas that go on. Sweet peas, and then the dahlias are, are finishing out that are like fireworks. So you've on. got layering, yeah, all layering throughout the, throughout one the thing season, comes so in. that there's bloom continuously. So you want to order all of your bulbs in the seasons that they're blooming. But if you order them ahead of time, you're going to be assured that you have what you want. And there's nothing worse than going to order your tulips in the fall and seeing that sold out thing. That's really depressing. You don't want that. <laughs>
Don't miss another video visit. Click on the orange cue to subscribe and have Quintessence virtually delivered from our doorstep to yours.